Hey, 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 it's me, Tiffany. Welcome to my channel where I share all things pregnancy, postpartum, and motherhood related. I am a certified birth and postpartum doula, so that means I support women in their family on their journeys from conception to postpartum. If you haven't had a chance yet, please check out my website at www.nurturedbytiff.com where you can check out the doula services that I offer. You can check out my childbirth education courses and you can check out my merch. So on today's video, I'm going to discuss the, the subject of motherhood. And the reason why um, I chose to discuss this today is because here lately, there have been a lot of videos that have been popping up I mean, a lot of different stories um, about mothers who are making the decision more and more often to take their children's lives. Um, we have people like Lindsay Clancy. Um, I think she's based out of Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken, and she took the lives of three of her children and it's, they're debating on whether it was postpartum psychosis or if it was you know something that she planned to do um you have the Letitia Stout case it is you know currently going right now and this is a woman who took the life of her 11 year old stepchild um so is motherhood worth it is being a mother all it's cracked up to be as the mother of four children you know my girls are 19 11 6 and 2 okay all four of them are girls I can say that motherhood is definitely challenging and it is definitely not for everyone. Um, I've seen a lot of videos here lately where there are, you know, women that are creating content talking about why they decided not to have children. And quite honestly, I am okay with the fact that, you know, women are, you know, speaking up about the fact that they've chosen not to have children. I think that just because we are women, society puts that pressure on us to make us feel like, okay, you're a woman and that's what you're supposed to do. But I'm going to be realistic. It is not for everyone. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the cons of making the decision to have children. Right. So first off, when you make the decision to have children, me time is very limited so if you're a person who needs to have me time not to say that you'll never get it however if you were a person who decided not to have children you would definitely have more time for yourself statistics actually show that women who do not have children have 79 percent more me time than women who do have children and if you have more than one child you can just like eh, cancel that you know what i'm saying like me time for me is pretty much non-existent i'm not even gonna lie to you you know um so um you know i do get time for myself here and there you know Usually when I go to the bathroom, but then I have little fingers sticking out, you know what I'm saying, sticking up under the door, or my children are very smart, you know what I'm saying, or I don't even know if smart is the word, maybe more like crooks, because they'll go get knives and they'll freaking pick the lock and come in the bathroom on me, you know what I'm saying? So me time is non-existent, okay? Your relationships and marriages, right? If you decide to have children, they're likely to suffer, not to say that if you do decide to have children, that you will not be able to have time with your boyfriend or you will not be able to have time with your mate. However, you're going to have to factor in the fact, especially if you're working a full-time job. So say, for instance, you work, you know what I'm saying, Monday through Friday, typical hours, you work from like 8 to 4.30, right? You get off, you know you got to go pick up your children from like after school care or school or daycare or wherever they may be. You have to go home, you got to cook, you got to help with homework. You have, if, if it's laundry that needs to be done, like those things need to be done. And then, you know, if you have some type of, you know, other work that you need to do, if they have after school activities or, you know, sports or things like that, you have to factor all that in. And then you have to try to figure out when am I going to be able to spend this one on one time with my mate? You know what I'm saying? So that's why if you do make the decision to have children, you have to make sure that you carve out that time. So date night, you know what I'm saying? On Saturday or once or twice a month or make sure that you have your children in bed by a specific time so you all can have like that evening time to, you know, wrap things up and spend that time with each other. It's It's been shown, you know, that a lot of the times, especially within the first year of a couple having a baby, there's so much stress and strain on your relationship that a lot of the times, y'all don't make it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's ridiculous. Sex, 
I'm just gonna put it out there. You know what I'm saying? That's a big thing. You're freaking tired. You know what I'm saying? And so like that's on the woman's mind a lot of the times. It's typically like the last thing that's on her mind. You know what I'm saying? Like she is if she's worked all day, she had to come home, cook, clean, do all that stuff with the kids or whatever. She is freaking exhausted. So y'all have to make sure that y'all are gonna carve out some type of time to have that time with each other so if you decide not to have children that's not anything you have to worry about you can go out on dates you can have plenty of whoopee you know if that's what you want to do like those are anything things that you have to worry about if you do not like children don't have children like if you genuinely are a person who really truly love children you love being around children and you know that hey having a child is something that i really and truly want to do um because this is something i want to do not because you feel like you're being pressured to do it or anything like that don't have children if you do not like being around children if you do not like children if you do not feel like you can commit to a lifetime of a child and when i say a lifetime being a parent does not stop when they turn 18 mine is my oldest is 19 and quite honestly, I feel like there's way more pressure on me now that she's an adult and she's out here in this world. I worry so much more about her than I did when she was younger, okay? Don't have a child to save a relationship. I'm going to say this again. Do not have a child to save a relationship. It ain't going to work. Babies, children, they can bring on a lot more stress and strain and make it a lot harder for a relationship that's already struggling and crumbling at the cracks and the foundation. You know what I'm saying? It isn't solid. If you try to bring in a baby to that mix, it's not going to save a relationship and it's not going to keep a man. Like, that's just not realistic. So don't put yourself out there and think that, okay, well, he don't want to be with me. I'm just going to go ahead, you know, and try to trap him and get pregnant. Uh-uh, baby girl. Don't do it. Do not. Don't do it don't do it children are expensive very expensive child care is expensive shoes are expensive clothes are expensive after school activities are expensive food is expensive <laughs> you know what i'm saying like children cost a lot it costs a lot to take care of these little people so you got to keep that in mind you know what i'm saying you you got to keep that in mind. Like having children in this day and age is not cheap. I think that I read something that said a girl from birth to 18 is two it's going to cost a minimum of $250,000 and I think a boy is like $200,000. So, you factor that that's just like freaking paying for like their, their their basics, you know, uniforms, clothes, school, whatever, whatever. Let's not forget if they want to go to college or whatever. Are you funding that? You know what I'm saying? Like you have to think about those type of things, okay? Having children can affect your mental health, okay? Having children can affect your mental health. If someone who has anxiety, if someone who has suffered from postpartum depression, I'm letting you know, children can affect your mental health. So you do have women out here who are not um, able to notice the signs of the postpartum depression that they're having or postpartum psychosis that they're having or postpartum anxiety that they're having. And if you have one child, okay, and you've had postpartum depression or psychosis or whatever, each time you decide to have another child, those chances of you having postpartum psychosis, having postpartum depression, or the things that you had in the previous pregnancy are increased. If you had any kind of trauma or anything like that, the chances of you going through it with subsequent subsequent pregnancies is increased. So you have to have your mental health in check if you're gonna decide that you want to have a child. And I feel like the healthcare system fails a lot of us because when we decide that we want to have children or whatever the case may be, although it is a personal choice, you know, it. I'm, I'm a real firm believer on this. It takes a village, okay? So I feel like healthcare providers should definitely step up. The little measly um, six-week follow-up that you get after you have your baby does not suffice. I disagree with that, and I wish and I hope and I pray that someday that that changes because you when we need that follow-up we need for someone to to lay eyes on us to help us you know through the difficulties you know everybody it seems like you're they prepare you the whole pregnancy long you know what i'm saying for you know 
what to expect during the pregnancy but once you have your baby you're pretty much on your own you know and i had a patient not too long ago come in she had her baby about a, almost a year ago and she's just now starting to deal with like the depression and anxiety you know she said she was waiting on it you know like she was like when is it going to start and it hadn't started after she had her baby and she was like oh i'm fine but truth be told you can go through postpartum depression or anxiety and all that stuff a year after no one prepared her for that no one prepares you for that and that i feel is a true disservice to people out here in the community you need to help help people help women if you're in healthcare, GYN, OB, midwife, you know, doula like myself, it's important that we have things in place for women after they have their babies because that support is paramount. They need that support. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just want to get on here and just like talk really quickly because these, these stories are heartbreaking, okay? And I don't want... <clears throat> women to feel like the only reason they were put on this earth is to have children okay if you are making the decision that you don't want to have children and you 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 have that is your right okay i don't want anyone to feel like they're backed in a corner or they have to have babies in order to prove that they're this or to be accepted or because your mother said i want a grandbaby or because old boy said i want you to have my baby and we don't know what he's gonna do you know what i'm saying I want more women to think about pregnancy. You know what I'm saying? I want more women to think about whether or not they, they really do want to have children. If they are ready for that, you know? Um, and if you want to have babies, that's a beautiful thing. But if you don't want to have babies, that's a beautiful thing also. Okay? I just want more women to really, you know, take control over those decisions in their lives. You know? Um because there's no point in having these beautiful children when you lose your temper because the father no longer wants to be with you and you decide to take them out or you're not getting the proper support that you need you know from your family or your providers or your friend or your your village and you snap one day and you take it out on your babies you know what i'm saying there's a lot that goes into motherhood a lot that goes into motherhood and it's not for everybody you know my mom tells me all the time that i'm so patient <laughs> and she admires me yo it's a lot of work it is not for the faint of heart you know what i'm saying but if you're able to really sit down and say you know what i can do this okay you know you can do this or if you can you sit down and say you know what i don't want to have no kids that is absolutely fine that is absolutely fine. You know, children deserve to have stable parents, a stable mother, a mother who, you know, is, is, is able to be selfless. You know, if you know that that's not something that you really want to do, if you know you don't, you don't want to give up your me time, if you know Saturday mornings you don't want to get up and have to deal with nobody, no kids, no none of that stuff, you know, lay your cards out you know what i'm saying be honest with yourself you know is being a mother something i really want to do it's okay not to all right um it just hurts my soul to see babies losing their lives for no reason you know if some of these women could go back you know and and, and decide you know or really figure out whether that's something they really wanted to do i wonder if things would be different um, but like I said, I'm glad that more and more women are having the conversations or opening up, the, you know, the door for the conversation of, you know what, I don't want to be a mom and that's fine. Or I want to be a mom and that's fine too. I thank you so much for watching. Um, please comment, like, share, subscribe. Um, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.